Hi, everyone. Welcome and thanks for being here. This is the Jacqueline Bouvier and John F. Kennedy's 1953 Wedding History Program. This is a series of programs we're having over the next few months to remember the 60th anniversary of the death of President Kennedy. Uh, President Kennedy was killed in Dallas, Texas on November 22nd, 1963. So we have a whole series of programs coming up to remember President Kennedy. And these programs will be taking place uh, over Zoom, live stream type programs like this. And then also we have in-person programs that will be taking place in both Washington, D.C. and Dallas, Texas. You can be on the lookout for those. My name is Robert Kellerman. I'll, I'll be your host. A little bit about myself. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. I was a art history major in college at the University of Michigan. Uh, I spent many, many years living in Southern California and Washington, D.C. And let's see. And I currently live in Dallas, Texas. Uh, that's a little bit about myself. And we have our fabulous co-host joining us once again this evening, the pride of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, Patty. <laughs> Hi, Patty. You want to say hello and introduce yourself? Oh, and I forgot to mention, as far as myself, for the trivia type question, my favorite president, I'll go with Harry S. Truman. And for favorite first lady, I'll go with Laura Bush. How about that? So what about yourself, Patty? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, checking in from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, Truman's a good choice, but... I don't know, especially when things seem like they're kind of tumultuous around uh, this country. I, I always go back to Abraham Lincoln because it's like inspiring that somebody can hold it together. So gives me hope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and well, what then about your favorite first lady? First lady. There's so many that are accomplished in so many different ways. But I, I'm going to go back with my original inspiration is uh, Eliz uh, Elizabeth, Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay, well, that's cool. And then um, what about, thank you, Patty, for joining us um, once again this evening. You were with us earlier. So um, we had the earlier program. Any particular thing that you found most, um, say, interesting or striking about the Kennedy's wedding or anything you kind of recommend people be on the lookout for? Um, yeah, I, I, again, it, 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 uh, I don't know how much um, understanding people have of, of Catholic weddings, but um, there, there's a reason... That, it's actually kind of amazing that there are two pictures that seem to have been taken inside the church during the wedding because um, the church does not allow uh, photography during the mass. Um, so that's one thing. And um, just I, I just think it's interesting, all the spectators there lo looking at the style of dress, uh, flashing back to the 50s, noticing how many of the women um, who are just coming to gawk um, are wearing hats. Um, which was very common at that time. And yeah, I have this tendency to to like sort of understand history in terms of cultural change. Um, and so those are the things I tend to draw attention to. And uh, one thing about this wedding, um, both the Kennedys in their way and the Bouviers in their way um, were considered um, like, newly arrivé and uh so th they were there was a lot of celebrity value and joseph kennedy who, who had been a lot very involved in a lot of areas but was very media savvy and had owned hollywood studios um and was friends with william randolph Hearst, of course the publisher um so he was very media savvy and he really um stage managed the careers of his sons that was his dream from the beginning to have a son that became a president and initially he was focused on uh, joseph his uh, namesake son who died during world war ii so then jack was the next oldest to uh, to joseph and uh the father's attentions got turned in that direction so there's so much dynamic involved um in the whole family saga so there's a lot of hints of all that here but it's not clearly spelled out so i encourage people to check into it further if if they're intrigued by all this okay awesome well thanks betty we'll dive into those some topics a little more detail a little bit later and then we also have our good friend brad the pride of falling waters west virginia joining us hi brad how are you and you want to let us know your favorite president your favorite first lady and what you found most um say interesting or striking about the the wedding or recommend for people to look on for yeah, hi Robert and Patty. Uh, I'm 
here in Falling Waters. And my favorite president uh, at this point was George Herbert Walker Bush. And his w wife is the first lady, Barbara Bush. I thought she was phenomenal in that role. Uh, I think the coverage of the wedding that we saw earlier, I, I want to warn people that they've colorized a lot of these pictures. That's a very imprecise uh, art. And uh, so you may get a little confused by some of the colors, but uh, it's it's really beautifully done. Oh, good point. Yeah, thanks, Brad. So yeah, a lot of the photographs were black and white, but a few of them I pulled out are colorized. And you know, they're a little bit interesting to look at the colorization. But as Brad said, it's not always exactly um, spot on. Well, way. For example, radioli, radiolus flowers were pink. And then most of the art, they come, most of the colorized pictures comes out as white. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, well, excellent. Yep. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was I was about done with that. I was just talking about the art of colorizing. Yeah, so we'll be on the lookout for that. So thanks, Brad. I appreciate that. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so we're going to be talking about, of course, John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy. Their wedding took place 70 years ago this week on September 12th, 1953. These are probably the two most famous photos of the wedding one at the ceremony and one at the reception. And as Brad mentioned, um, these were both originally black and white photos that have been colorized. And so it's kind of cool uh, to be able to see them in color, but the colorization uh, can be a little bit different than what actually was taking place. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about the Kennedys. Um, there's only so many uh, photos and like say video clips of the Kennedy's wedding. Um, so we'll do that kind of more towards the middle and the end of the program. Before we get into that, I thought I'd give you maybe some historical context of Jacqueline and John F. Kennedy, um, what they were up to before they met and kind of talk about some of those things. So you'd be on the lookout for that. Then we'll talk about the wedding ceremony and reception. And then we get done uh, a few interesting tidbits about what happened to them after the wedding. In addition, of course, moving into the White House. And so let's go ahead and get started. So the historical context before the wedding. Let's first talk about the groom, John F. Kennedy. And here is a photo of John F. Kennedy's parents getting married, Joseph Kennedy and Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy. They were married in 1914. If you're wondering where the Fitzgerald in John Fitzgerald Kennedy's name came from, that was his mom's maiden name. And this was originally a black and white photo that uh, someone colorized. So I don't do this colorization work myself, uh, but I do think it's kind of fascinating. It does kind of make some of the pictures. I like both black and white and color photography, but I do like the color ones that look a little bit more lifelike. Um, so this is from 1914. And it was a somewhat modest wedding. Um, Joseph Kennedy and Rose Fitzgerald um, came from fairly affluent families, but they weren't quite in the, uh, say, financial stratosphere they would be in uh, a little bit later on, but a beautiful wedding photo of them. And then, of course, John F. Kennedy was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts, for the most part. And there's a lot of sites related to John F. Kennedy in and around Boston that you can go check out, including one of the homes that he lived in. And I always think it's interesting to look at these childhood photos of people before they became famous. So here's John F. Kennedy as a young man. And then, of course, the Kennedy family is one of the more well-known, if not the most well-known, political family in American history. Um, so Joe and Rose had nine children. And can you recognize... John F. Kennedy in this photo. Well, he's over here, second from the left. And then here's Robert Kennedy, second from the right, and Ted Kennedy here in the center. And then I'm not crazy about my high school yearbook photo, but hey, here's John F. Kennedy's high school yearbook photo. Uh, he did spend some time in New York. The family kind of went back and forth between Boston and New York and a few other places. 
Um, so you can see young man at age 17, five foot 11, 155 pounds. You can see he was involved in all different types of uh, athletic things like football and basketball and golfing and et cetera, et cetera. And he was going off to Harvard. And so John F. Kennedy went to and graduated from Harvard University. And there he is studying. Of course, he's studying wearing a suit. <laughs> and then here's a photo from, from a little bit later. Same time frame. And hey, check out that really cool typewriter he's using. You remember those. And the book, Why England Slept. Yeah, famous book that he That's wrote. His, yep. Exactly. <laughs> it's good eye, Patty. Very awesome. <laughs> and then here's his college graduation photo from Harvard. Now, a lot of people know that John F. Kennedy had an older brother. And there's a lot of people that don't know that he had an older brother. So this is John F. Kennedy on the right with his father in the center and the older or the oldest uh, Kennedy's son, Joseph Kennedy Jr. Um, now, you might not be familiar with him because he was killed during World War II. And so, as Patty mentioned earlier, uh, then it was John F. Kennedy was kind of like the next man up, so to speak. Uh, and then he inherits the kind of political ambitions of his father uh, and continues on. But a lot of people always kind of speculated or wondered, gee, what would have happened if Joe Kennedy Jr. hadn't been killed during World War II, how things might have turned out differently. Anyway, a nice touching photo of the father and his two oldest sons. And then John F. Kennedy during World War II was in the Navy. So he, you know, John F. Kennedy graduated from Harvard shortly before the United States got involved in World War II. Uh, he enlisted in the Navy and was sent to the South Pacific and was famously involved in the PT-109 incident. So here's probably, this is one of the, I'd say maybe the most famous photos of John F. Kennedy as a young man. Here he is on the boat, the PT-109. And interestingly enough, not only is this month the 70th anniversary of President Kennedy's wedding, and later on in November will be the 60th anniversary of his death, it's also the 80th anniversary of the PT-109 sinking. Uh, so 1943, uh, John F. Kennedy and the PT-109 uh, was sunk in 1953. He was married in 1963, he was killed. So interesting numbers or years ending in the number three and the significance to John F. Kennedy. And if you get a chance, you should check out the PT-109 film starring Cliff Robertson as John F. Kennedy. And then there's also a really cool National Geographic documentary, The Search for Kennedy's PT-109. I recommend both of those. And then here's a really cool early media coverage of John F. Kennedy when he was running for Congress. So uh, Kennedy gets out of the Navy, World War II ends in 1945, and then he ends up running for a seat in the House of Representatives in 1946, and he ends up winning. And interestingly enough, a, another gentleman who also was in the Navy, who was elected to the House of Representatives in 1946 from California was John F. Kennedy's uh, political rival Richard Nixon. So both Kennedy and Nixon served in the Navy in the South Pacific, and they both ended up getting elected to Congress uh, in 1946. John F. Kennedy from Massachusetts, Richard Nixon from California. And they kind of talked about how uh, early in their careers, they, they had a great deal of respect for one another um, and you know, kind of were on friendly terms. And then, uh, of course, later on became political rivals. But an interesting media piece on John F. Kennedy nonetheless. And then here he is campaigning. And we had the earlier program uh, this morning, a lot of people were commenting on uh, the youthful appearance of <laughs> John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier in some of these pictures and how thin people were and the style of clothes they wore and their hair styles and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, really interesting to look at these old historic photos. And John F. Kennedy would win a seat in the House of Representatives in 1946. And then how about this? So this is his passport photo from around the, from a few years later, from around the time that he met 
Jacqueline Bouvier. So there you go. John F. Kennedy's passport photo. All right, let's talk about the bride, Jacqueline Bouvier. Now, I have never been able to find any wedding photos of her parents. Um, it's sometimes hard to find wedding photos, uh, historical wedding photos from, say, like before the, I don't know, mid-1900s, because um, while there were wedding photos taken periodically, uh, they weren't as commonplace as they are now. Um, so I've never been able to find a wedding photo of John Bouvier III and Janet Lee Bouvier. They were married in 1928. There's a couple of nice photos of them a little bit later. And you can see they were very dapper looking and aristocratic. And Jacqueline Bouvier um, spent her childhood in a number of different places, mostly though for her early years. Her home base was New York City and the Hamptons, uh, which is outside of New York City. Um, so that was kind of her home base for the first, say, 11 years of her life. And some early photos of her. She was a big animal lover, of course. And horses. Jacqueline Kennedy later on would describe her childhood as horses and books <laughs> were the two constants in her early childhood. And then a personal tragedy struck Jacqueline Bouvier when she was a young lady. Her parents got divorced, which divorce at this time was very uncommon. Um, and Jackie was really distraught by this, although it did have somewhat of a silver lining to her parents' divorce because her mom, and this is Jackie's mom here, this is Jacqueline Bouvier back here. Her mom remarried, and this is her stepfather. And the reason why it has a silver lining is because Jackie's life goes from being centered around New York City um, and the Hamptons to being centered around Washington, D.C. And that's important because Jackie would end up going to uh, college in Washington, D.C. She'd end up getting a job there, and that's where she would end up meeting John F. Kennedy. So I kind of always wonder, like, gee, I wonder if her parents wouldn't have got divorced. Uh, maybe she would have stayed in New York City uh, her life and she wouldn't have met John F. Kennedy, perhaps. Of course, speculation. And this is a photo of, again, Jacqueline Bouvier's mom, um, her new husband, or Jackie's stepfather, and then the extended family. Uh, her mom and stepfather had a few children amongst themselves. And then this is the home that Jackie was living in from the time she was around 11 or so until she ended up marrying John F. Kennedy. And this is in a place called McLean, Virginia. It's a, a wealthy suburb outside of Washington, DC. You can see that's a very beautiful home. And Jacqueline was a debutante. And then here's her high school yearbook photo, Jacqueline Lee Bouvier from McLean, Virginia, also known as Jackie. And you can see most known for her wit. And then this is interesting, ambition, not to be a housewife, um, which that, that seemed like a big deal now, but uh, back in this era in say 1947, um, majority of women were housewives at some point in time during their lives. Um, so kind of interesting that she has different uh, intentions, so to speak. And she's also wearing the pearls, uh, which is one of the things that she would become known for as first lady. So interesting high school yearbook photo, Jackie. Oops, hold on one second. And then even though her parents got divorced and Jacqueline stayed with her mom. Oh, hold on one second. What's going on here? Hold on. Let me... Okay, thanks for your patience. All right, so here is Jacqueline Bouvier and her sister, Lee. Of course, Jackie's on the left. 
And again, I really like both men and women looking at these old photos to see people's uh, clothing and fashion styles and the way they do their hair, et cetera, et cetera. Patty brought up a really interesting point in the earlier program. This was an era when a lot of women had short hair. Patty, what's the story on that? Um, well, traditionally, women's hairstyles uh, tended to be longer. Um, but of course, there was the period. So during times when women were feeling their oats or feeling like more moving forward in, in society um, and life, uh, shorter hair became much more popular. And usually was followed by a kind of reactionary move toward long hair. So if anybody remembers the 60s, long, long straight hair became the thing very soon thereafter. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that, Patty. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. And then another picture of Jackie and her sister. They had a really interesting relationship. They were very, very close. Um, but a lot of people say they were also kind of rivals uh, in many ways. So interesting relationship between the Bouvier girls, or the Bouvier sisters. And where did Jacqueline Bouvier graduate from college? She went to um, a couple different universities, but she ended up graduating from George Washington University, which is in Washington, D.C. Uh, remember I said earlier, sure, her life uh, from the time she was about 11 or 12 was really centered around Washington, D.C. And what was her major? It was French literature. French literature for Jacqueline Bouvier. And then this is a graduation photo. So not like the kind of graduation photo where like, you know, you, uh, the photographer comes to the school, um, but like your family uh, and are all dressed up and posed for a photographer. And this is also a very famous photo of her from early in her career. So she has just graduated from college. And she's got the pearls and the gloves and looking towards the camera see what life is going to bring her. Now, what was Jacqueline's career before she was first lady? I think a lot of people just kind of assume she was always first lady. <laughs> well, no, she was a journalist. Um, she was a reporter and a photographer for a newspaper called the Washington Times Herald. Uh, the Washington Times Herald is no longer in existence. It was actually purchased by the Washington Post. And Jackie was a reporter slash photographer. Look at that cool camera uh, that she's got. Um, so she'd travel around the city interviewing people and taking pictures and stuff. And I always kind of wonder what impact Jackie's media career had on the Kennedys because they were very media savvy. And Patty earlier was talking about how uh, Joe Kennedy Sr. was very media savvy and, and had um, connections with Hollywood and all that kind of stuff and kind of a similar thing with Jackie. And so put those skills to good use. And then here's a picture of her. This is a woman who's feeding goldfish um, at an office building. And so Jackie's got her camera there and she's moving in the position to take her photo. And I think this is another one of those kind of tidbits where a lot of people know that Jacqueline Kennedy was a journalist, or I should say at this point in time, Jacqueline Bouvier. Uh, a lot of people know that she was a journalist before she met President Kennedy, but a lot of people don't know that also. So Kind of an interesting hit or miss tidbit. And then here's her passport photo from around the time that she met John F. Kennedy. Uh, one of the things that was interesting about them that they had in common, they had both traveled extensively. So now that might not be a big deal if someone from the United States goes to say Europe or Asia, but in the early 1950s, that was not the case. So John F. Kennedy had been overseas the Pacific. Um, he had traveled to Europe several times and had been to Asia. Um, Jackie had traveled extensively as well. She actually spent uh, one of her um, college years in Paris. So the fact that they had kind of this international travel uh, experience was something that was kind of unusual for people uh, of their generation. And so that was something that they clicked on. All right, so I'm recording this program for our YouTube channel, but it includes a few video snippets and I can't continue the recording with the video snippet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the recording and then I'm going to play the video. And then once the video is over, I'll. All right. And speaking of presidents and first ladies or future presidents and future first ladies getting married, uh, obviously there's a lot of presidents 
and first ladies that were married before photography came along. And so here's a depiction of what George and Martha Washington's wedding was like back in the day. If you get a chance, there's a really great book about Martha Washington that goes into a pretty detailed description on what her wedding was like. And really interesting to read about the kind of comparisons and contrasts with modern weddings. And Abraham Lincoln and Mary Todd. Grover and Francis Cleveland. Grover and Francis Cleveland actually married at the White House. Uh, Grover Cleveland was a bachelor president and he married Francis Cleveland in the White House. And then Herbert and Lou Hoover. Some of the presidents and first ladies that were married uh, in their earlier days, there's not great photographs of, uh, just because like I said earlier, wedding photography didn't really become a big thing um, until like say, I don't know, the mid 1900s. I mean, there are wedding photos that exist of people that were married before then of course, um, but not as many, uh, the, the whole wedding photography thing really kind of escalates uh, in say the mid 1900s in my opinion. All right, how and where did Jacqueline Bouvier and John F. Kennedy meet? Hmm, what do you think? Were they fixed up on a blind date? Did they meet on Tinder? Were they next door neighbors? What do you think? Well, they met at a Georgetown dinner party. Georgetown is a neighborhood within Washington, D.C. And John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier met at a dinner party in Georgetown in May of 1951. The dinner party was hosted by this gentleman, Charles Bartlett. He was friends with both of them. Uh, he actually also knew John F. Kennedy's father, Joe. And Charles Bartlett and Jacqueline Bouvier um, had actually gone on a date. He was a journalist himself. Uh, he ended up crossing paths with Jackie. They got to know one another. He asked her out and they went on a date and they got along pretty well. Um, they just both realized it wasn't a, say, quote unquote, love connection. Uh, but they stayed in touch. And then Charles Bartlett ended up marrying another young lady um, and then he and his new wife had a dinner party at their house and they invited a few different people over and two of the people they invited this particular evening were John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier and the dinner party took place in May of 1951 at this house, 3419 Q Street Northwest. So if you're familiar with Washington, D.C., this is in the Georgetown neighborhood, and the house isn't open to the public, um, but it's really cool. It's owned by a guy who's a big Kennedy buff, um, and then there's a plaque outside signifying the fact that this is the house where the two of them met, and really kind of incredible to think like, gee, how would history have turned out differently had these two not met uh, at the dinner party at this house? And here it is. And then the evening festivities uh, began with you know, drinks and hors d'oeuvres um, outside in the backyard. So this is the back of the house. And so if you can imagine having drinks and hors d'oeuvres and chatting amongst the guests taking place here. And then people move to the inside of the house and they enjoyed a nice dinner. And <laughs> we had kind of an interesting discussion on this earlier. So the, the main course for dinner this evening, what would you eat at a dinner party like this? Well, in 1951, it was chicken casserole. How about that? Chicken casserole was the uh, main course. And, and supposedly, according to the guests, John F. Kennedy was in heavy flirting mode uh, with Jacqueline Bouvier. She was much more demure, though. She was actually in a relationship with someone at this time. Um, and she was friendly enough, but um, she wasn't kind of um, um, giving him back the flirtatious intentions that he was while they're eating their chicken casserole. And then eventually the guests all reconvened in the living room for a game of charades. So chicken casserole and charades was taking place in this house when John F. Kennedy met Jack and Bouvier way back in 1951. And then he uh, tried to make a move on her by offering to either walk her home or to perhaps share a cab together to take her home. 
And she was like, uh, no, I have my own car. Thank you. And jumped in her car and took off. And so off she went and they actually ended up, um, this was two years before they got married. And so they didn't like immediately start dating right away, but they did stay in touch with one another. Uh, and then eventually they did go out and things kind of progressed from there. And John F. Kennedy supposedly told friends of his about Jackie. He said, quote, I've never met anyone like her. Hmm. Um, <laughs> now, now, when she started to get to know John F. Kennedy, um, she was thinking that he was a lot smarter uh, than the other guys that she had dated. I'm kind of paraphrasing uh, some quotes and letters that she um wrote but she basically said a lot of the other guys she dated were dumb and she was really attracted to the fact that he was really smart um, and i think some people don't um, maybe underestimate john f kennedy's intellect he's kind of known sometimes it's going to be like you know a pretty boy kind of guy but he's very intelligent and then she also liked the fact that he was very ambitious and he's going places he's a congressman etc etc she did have a big concern uh, about his career though he was just a hundred percent focused on his political career and she kind of wondered if he would have time to you know invest in a relationship with her uh, just fyi and then charles bartlett ended up staying close to uh, both jacqueline and jackie later on and so this is the wedding here's jackie and here's jack and this is charles bartlett the guy who dinner party they met one another at and this is a steep slope here at the uh, wedding reception and Charles is helping Jackie down this steep slope. And then later on in life, um, he would, and his wife would end up being the God parents to Jack and Jackie's son, John Jr. So how about that? And so there's that event taking place at a church in Georgetown. And then interestingly enough, Jacqueline Bouvier was engaged before she was engaged to John F. Kennedy. So, you know, there's this term now starter marriage. So I guess you could say this was a starter engagement for her. And this was the era of the society pages of the newspaper. And so you can see here's Jackie here. And you can see Miss J.L. Bouvier becomes engaged. George Washington University alumni will be bride of John Houston Jr., a Yale graduate. So what would have happened if she would have married him? Maybe he would have become president. I don't know. <laughs> Interesting to think about. Um, and so she was supposed to be married to him, but she ended up breaking things off. And here's a picture of him. By all accounts, he was a nice guy. Um, he would end up becoming a stockbroker. And his family was pretty well-to-do. He claimed, though, that the reason why Jackie broke off the engagement was both her and her mom uh, found out that his family wasn't as wealthy as they thought they were. And so even though he was, you know, came from a good family and was pretty well off, uh, he wasn't quite at the financial stratosphere that Jackie and her mom were looking for. That was according to him. Um, friends said that Jackie broke up with him because she thought he was kind of immature, but you know, Hey, that's just what they said. So who knows, but, um, it ended up working out okay for him because he ended up, uh, marrying another woman and they had children together and by all accounts had a successful, um, happy life with John Houston Jr. He kind of is like the Pete Best of, <laughs> of, uh, political figures, if you know who Pete Best is, the original drummer of the Beatles. And then this is, people were commenting on this earlier, like, wow, the uh, the engagement termination actually also made the society pages. So Miss Bouvier's engagement to John Houston Jr. announced is terminated. So imagine that. And then in a romantic relationship, there's this big turning point where one person meets the other person's family. You know, things are really starting to get serious when that happens. Um, and so, again, it's two years in between the time where Jackie and Jack meet and they end up getting married. And so for a while, they were just kind of, um, uh, there wasn't really much going on. And then eventually, uh, John F. Kennedy uh, 
and Jackie start dating and things get serious pretty quickly. And then he invites her up to Massachusetts to meet his family. And so that's what ends up taking place. This is in Hannesport, which is the Kennedy compound, even to this day. And so here's New York City over here. And here's Boston up here. And here's where that's taking place. And here's the house today. It's still owned by the Kennedy family. A funny story about John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier's first date. Legend has it that they went out to dinner and ran into some guy that John F. Kennedy knew. And so this guy sat down and he and John F. Kennedy spent the whole dinner talking about political stuff and just kind of ignoring Jackie. And she was a little annoyed by that. Uh, and so he kind of had to smooth things over with her to get a second date and things kind of progressed from there. So, yeah, he almost blew it um, on the first date that he had with her. Um, but he was able to kind of patch things up, so to speak. And then there's a lot of photos of this um, week long trip that she took up there. Joe Kennedy hired a photographer uh, to come here during this time uh, for all these family festivities. And there were a lot of photos snapped of her. Um, and so you can see different images of her. So there she is. And by all accounts, the Kennedys were really impressed with her. It was, was kind of almost seemed like a job interview, <laughs> uh, her going up there. Um, and she really wowed them. She really especially impressed um, John F. Kennedy's sisters who were very protective of him. And then they also, she also really impressed um, his dad, Joe Kennedy. And so there they are sailing on John F. Kennedy's boat. And then here they are hanging out in the house. You can see she doesn't have the uh, engagement ring on yet. And so there's a lot of photos kind of from this week-long trip that she took. And here they are on the beach. I think at this point he's telling her about the PT-109. And then at this point, I think he's asking her if she's ever thought about living in the White House. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Here's a colorized version of the same photo. And then this is a little bit later photo, um, but this is also same kind of time frame. And then going back to other future presidents and future first ladies who got married, here is Franklin Eleanor Roosevelt. So here's Eleanor Roosevelt. Here's Eleanor Roosevelt again, and here's Franklin back here. Um, people oftentimes when they see these historic photos, they comment that, gosh, the people must have been unhappy. They look so miserable. Well, that was just kind of the way it was with photography back then. People were more likely to be serious and not smiling and joking around and all that stuff. Um, but anyway, Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt. And then here's Harry and Bess Truman from Missouri. Harry Truman and Bess Truman were kind of like childhood sweethearts, so to speak. Um, and then he went off to Europe during World War I, and they had a long-distance relationship, and he came back to Missouri, and they got married. And then here's Dwight and Mamie Eisenhower. Dwight, of course, was in the Army, he was an Army officer. And Lyndon and Lady Bird Johnson, if you're familiar with Texas, um, Lyndon and Lady Bird met at the Texas State Capitol in Austin, and they had their first date at a restaurant at the Driscoll Hotel, which is like the most famous hotel in the city of Austin. It's like a very historic um, place. So they had their first date uh, at a restaurant in the Driscoll Hotel in Austin, Texas, Lyndon and Lady Bird. And then the proposal. So this is interesting tidbit. So John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier got engaged at a restaurant in Washington, D.C. And you can actually go visit this restaurant. It's called Martin's Tavern. You can see here it was established in 1933. It's in the Georgetown neighborhood of Washington, D.C. It's actually just a few blocks from the house where they first met, ironically enough. Uh, and there's this place called Proposal Booth. The tavern is on uh, Wisconsin Avenue. And the engagement took place on June 24th, 1953. Remember, they met 
uh, in May of 1951. So this was um, 25 months after they first met. And then here's Martin's Tavern in more recent times. Uh, it's actually a good place to eat. So if you're in Georgetown looking for a nice meal, you can check out Martin's. And they have outdoor dining, weather permitting. And then if you go inside, it's got like this old school kind of tavern restaurant look to it. And this is actually the booth that John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier were sitting in when he proposed. And there's a little plaque here that signifies that that's where this event took place. And then, of course, you got this nice view here of Georgetown. And then here is the plaque, the proposal booth where JFK proposed to Jackie, and she said yes. And then another view of the booth. So if you ever want to go check this out, um, you can. Now, this restaurant's not very big, and Georgetown can be kind of a busy place. So, I mean, if you just show up here and you're hoping to sit at this booth, mm, it may happen, or <laughs> or there may already be someone sitting in there. I'll see this, have to see how it goes. But anyway, kind of cool that they have this nonetheless. And then this is a... Uh, placard outside in the window talking about the proposal booth. JFK and Jackie frequently dine in booth three at Martin's Tavern as he lived only two blocks from the tavern. He used to, before he met her, he used to like to go here after church um, on Sundays and read the paper. Um, and then having just returned from covering the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II for the Washington Times Herald, remember Jackie was a reporter, uh, Miss Jacqueline Lee Bouvier accepted Senator John Kennedy's proposal in booth three on June 24th, 1953. And then this government official actually witnessed this taking place. And years later, he provided his recollection of this event and said, I was in Martin's Tavern sitting at the bar having a drink. I'm sure it was a martini. <laughs> it was the cocktail hour. Senator John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier were sitting in the booth by the window. I recognized them both. After the Senator proposed and she accepted, the news ran through the restaurant. After the senator proposed, oh, uh, um, and then that night we didn't know his future and what it would bring. In hindsight, it was great fun to witness a part of history. So again, imagine how different history would have turned out uh, had they not met at that dinner party or had she not accepted his proposal at Martin's Tavern. And then if you want to see um, some of these places associated with the Kennedys in Georgetown, um, like those two sites, and then there's, um, let's see, three different homes that they lived in before they moved into the White House. The two homes that Jackie lived in after she moved out of the White House, after the death of President Kennedy, are also in Georgetown. Um, their son, John Jr., was born in Georgetown. Uh, the church that they went to was in Georgetown. And so if you want to go check these sites out, um, I'll be leading this in-person tour in Washington, D.C., on Saturday evening, September 23rd, and you can check that out. It's posted on our meetup site. It's not posted on our Eventbrite site just yet, but it'll be um, done so in the next day or two. So you may look out for that. And it's, of course, free, and come join us. All right, let's talk about the engagement. All right, back to the society pages. Senator Kennedy will wed Miss from Newport. So I thought we'd switch gears and get Patty to come on. So Patty, I'm thinking maybe there's some people that don't know what the society pages are. And we, and since you were kind of brought this up earlier in your program, uh, any kind of insight into uh, what this was from days gone by? I remember what these pages were, but I'm thinking maybe some younger people might not. Uh, yeah, I didn't catch the tail end of what you said, but yeah, most major newspapers, and that would include the, the New York Times and the Washington Post and they had what were called the society pages. I think nowadays those few that still have them call them lifestyle and things like that. But um, yeah, so that was kind of a measure of where you stood in the uh, social world in uh, any of those major towns and cities. Boston Globe, same thing, would have that. Um, and some people might have might remember them when there still were a lot of local papers, young girls locally would, you know, be noted in that. Um, but yeah, it was a, I, I before social I, media way of like telling people what was going on out in the world. Yeah, it was very different. Like somebody this morning had had noticed the uh, the notice of her canceling her engagement, and they 
said they had <laughs> never heard of such a thing that uh, the canceled engagement was uh was published and i said oh yeah you know if you felt if you you kind of could gauge uh how important you were by if any part of your life fell off the society pages you knew you were done for um but yeah so um and there was a lot of um it in some ways it kind of paralleled like the the movie fan magazines but it was you know it kept it was more of an east coast thing and it it, it sort of maintained a kind of quote-unquote dignity um and oh things that like debutante balls would be published there everybody's name would be listed um graduations um all kinds of things like that um yeah, like look at this paper it's actually not new york or bosnia denver <laughs> so they made the news all the way out there yeah and look at that first line the single girls in washington will do well to weep that would be the kind of folksy <laughs> um you know type kind of things and wording that you wouldn't use today (laughs) well exactly but yeah this is kind of the beginnings of um our um fascination with these cults of personality i think it would it was was endlessly fascinating to people who weren't living these kinds of lives which would be the majority of americans but as the culture and and media evolved um that became a a definite direction this kind of um uh you know well nowadays you would call people influencers i mean back in those days you would never think look at that picture and think oh yes there she is an influencer but (laughs) yeah if you think about how our cults of personality evolved this would be an early phase of it jackie the early influencer (laughs) (laughs) Um, let's see, this is a cute photo, I think. It's them getting their marriage license. And supposedly a photographer was around and wanted to take the picture of the two of them getting their marriage license, but John F. Kennedy wasn't wearing a jacket or a tie, and he thought he would like to be a little bit more dressed up. So he actually borrowed some guy's uh jacket and tie, according to legend, um, to fill out the <laughs> uh paperwork and then this guy's got a really interesting look on his face like yeah i've seen this before uh and then she's kind of looking at make sure he doesn't screw it up <laughs> yeah, he so, has an interesting expression on his face too it's a yeah. of him yeah. i don't know if any of you've seen it there's a really cute um painting by norman rockwell called the marriage license i should have pulled it up um and put it alongside this one um because it's kind of a similar type of approach but anyway uh that's the two of them filling out the marriage license Actually, that that outfit is so atypical of him that it reminds me of the um, Obama tan suit scandal. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, well, you can see like it looks like the. Uh, it's kind of hanging off of him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's <laughs> not the perfect fit, but hey, it's all good. Um, and then anyway, to go back to some wedding images of future presidents and first ladies. So I used to live in Southern California, and a great historic place is the Mission Inn in Riverside, California. And that's where Richard and Pat Nixon were married. Um, I think this photo was actually taken after their wedding. I think they're actually holding like their marriage license. And I think they're getting ready to go on their honeymoon. Um, so that was Southern California. And Patty was commenting earlier about how um, the whole look and feel of this photo is very uh, West Coast, where a lot of these other images we've been looking at have been more East Coast. And of course, uh, Richard Nixon and John F. Kennedy, uh, arch political rivals in the same era. And then here's Gerald Ford and Betty Ford from my home state of Michigan. We had another interesting discussion earlier this morning about how um, Betty Ford was actually married before and was divorced. Um, And Betty Ford, one of my favorite first ladies, if you read her autobiography, she talked about how Gerald Ford didn't care that she had been married and divorced, but his political team was really concerned about that. So they did everything that they could to keep that under wraps Uh, because they thought that would be really controversial. Um, So really kind of interesting how women's kind of roles and place in the world have changed since then, fortunately. And then how about Jimmy and Rosalind Carter? I remember um, a while back, maybe like a year or two ago, we posted this picture on our Facebook page or these two pictures on our Facebook page. And there's a lot of people that didn't recognize them first. (laughs) 
I was like, hey, who do you think this famous couple is? And like, no, I don't know. Who is it? <laughs> the Carters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I see. Anyway, Jim Monroe's in Carter. He also was in the Navy. And Ronald Nancy Reagan, also from California. So it is kind of interesting to go back and look at these historic photos of future presidents and future first ladies. All right. So the wedding took place 70 years ago this week on September 12th, 1953. And here is the wedding invitation. How would you have liked to got one of these in your mailbox? Um, so you can see this is invitation going out from Jacqueline's mom and her stepfather requesting the honor of your presence, uh, the marriage of their daughter to the honorable John Fitzgerald Kennedy. By this point in time, he had been elected to the Senate and the wedding's taking place Saturday, the 12th of September at 11 o'clock at St. Mary's Church on Spring Street in Newport, Rhode Island. And then this is a contemporary painting of what Jackie would have looked like on her wedding day. So yeah, imagine getting this in your mailbox. That would be pretty cool. And then this is Newport, Rhode Island. So the ceremony took place here at St. Mary's Church. And the reception took place place over here a couple miles away at a farm and we're using the term farm loosely we'll explain, explain why in a little bit and then um brad brought this up earlier newport has famous homes um so like here's the elms is a famous home the breakers um so all through this area a lot of wealthy individuals lived here throughout history and if you're wondering where newport rhode island is Right here, not to be confused with Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which is not too, too far <laughs> away. Patty, how far is Portsmouth from Newport? Oh, mile wide. I, I would say a this. couple of hours, a couple of hours. Portsmouth, not on this map. Again, nowadays, there's so much traffic all the time. It's like probably more like close to the three hours, but. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut. New Hampshire, Vermont, Maine, great states of New England. Yeah, all, right. all of New England is about the size of some of the Western states, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, St. Mary's Church. Um, so let's talk about the wedding ceremony. It was at St. Mary's Church, and the flowers were pink gladioli and white chrysanthemums. There were 800 guests that were invited to the wedding ceremony. Who was the best man? It was the president's younger brother, Robert Kennedy. And there were 13 additional ushers. The matron of honor was Jacqueline's sister, Lee. And there were also 10 bridesmaids, additional bridesmaids. And the bridesmaids' dresses were pink silk. There you have it. And then uh, some people asked about this in the earlier program, so I thought I'd put a slide together kind of talk about this. So uh, on the day of the wedding, John F. Kennedy was age 36 and Jacqueline was 24. I think some people don't realize the age difference um, between the two of them. Anyway, that's the story with them. And they were married uh, a little over 10 years. So the wedding took place September 12th, 1953. And unfortunately, President Kennedy was killed on November 22nd, 1963. So they had actually just celebrated their 10 year wedding anniversary a couple of months before he was killed. So imagine that. And then you can also see that um, John F. Kennedy was killed in 1963 um, and Jackie continued on for another 31 years. And here's the outside of the church. It's a beautiful historic church in Newport, Rhode Island. Here's a historical marker out front. Church was founded in 1828. And then it says, President John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Lee Bouvier were married here on September 12th, 1953. The future Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy had both attended this church um, in days prior to their marriage. Uh, so they were both familiar with this church. 
and I thought it'd be a nice romantic setting for the wedding ceremony. And here's the inside of the church. It's very beautiful. If you get a chance, um, stop by and check it out someday. Or if you're looking for a venue to get married in, beautiful stained glass. And then this is looking back the other way. And so you can see the bride will be coming through this door here and down the aisle. All right, let's talk about the ceremony itself. Here is the groom arriving. And then walking to the waiting area to get things started. And then this was the big social event of the year. And so really kind of incredible. Patty was talking about this earlier about, um, you know, this kind of early days of uh, uh, celebrity and all that kind of stuff. And so these are uh, kind of onlookers that showed up just to kind of get a glimpse of this uh, wedding party taking place. And the police kind of hoarding things off. And then here's the bride showing up with her stepfather. Uh, unfortunately, Jackie's father was not at the wedding. Um, there's kind of a some debate about what happened with that whole story. Um, he had a lot of health problems and he did not attend the wedding. And unfortunately, uh, Jackie's biological father, he did not live long enough to see her become first lady. But here she is with her stepfather, who's going to escort her down the aisle. And so we're going back in time to September 12th, 1953, and the beautiful bride. And then going into the church. And then one of the things I like about having our incredible co-hosts is people uh, kind of mentioning things that I wasn't aware of. But Patty was talking earlier about how the fact that uh, if you're seeing Catholic weddings, uh, photography is really frowned upon. So there's not a lot of photos of the actual ceremony taking place. Um, but somebody snuck this one in and you can see Jacqueline being escorted down the aisle with her stepfather. And then here's another view with the guests in place and everybody standing. Somebody this morning, Robert, was saying that they had read that, uh, which this is, I think, totally apocryphal, that her father was actually waiting in the third row. And when she approached the third row, he got up and escorted her the rest of the way. Absolutely untrue. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did that. I had heard that before. So um, amazing how these things get started, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway there's a ceremony and then here's a beautiful picture look at the sunlight shining in through the windows as they're taking their vows Gorgeous. and so again i wish i had more pictures of the actual ceremony uh but that apparently is frowned upon um traditionally and so not many pictures of the actual ceremony so it's nice that we have at least these three i have a feeling there might have been a substantial donation involved in getting because it really is it's, it's, <laughs> i was actually wondering about that myself <laughs> it is a forbidden thing it, it's a it's the mass is a sacrament and the marriage is a sacrament so it, mm -hmm. it's just not allowed in the catholic church i don't know like mm -hmm. i said i'm i'm sure something special was arranged <laughs> yeah, this sure. this one looks like it actually could be surreptitious so, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, great point, Brad. Yeah, it could be what we, well, actually, kind of the other two kind of look semi that way. Like, if you go back to this one, um, you know, it doesn't have that yeah, from the balcony, like, right? Like, locked in place. And then, um, you know, like for this one, even someone just probably pulled out their iPhone and snapped this really quickly. Right. No, 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 just kidding. Just kidding. But <laughs> yeah, that's, that's obviously from the choir loft. Yeah. So uh, you know, that was probably the deal. I, I'm sure that, like I said, I'm sure some money was involved and I'm sure they prearranged which specific place, hidden places that this could happen. Yeah. In the, in the flower pot 
mm-hmm. <laughs> in between things sticking out. How much you want to bet the the florist was in on arranging that one? <laughs> <laughs> we need a pot right here. Yeah, and then here they are walking out of the. So, like I said, I wish I had a dozen more photos of the actual ceremony to show you, but these are the only ones that were actually um, seen that are any good. And then again, this is um, there's probably like two famous photos of the Kennedy wedding. This one and then another one later one that I'll show, um, which where they're at the actual reception. But this is a black and white photo, and then different people have colorized it. Um, so Brad was talking before about how the coloring may be off a little bit um, on some of these, but it's still interesting nonetheless to look at and kind of get more of a lifelike view. You can see Jack there with his pinstripe pants and, you know, very dark in the background. And then kind of a close up. And so there you have it, the young couple. And just, again, kind of incredible to think how history would have turned out differently if these two not gotten married 70 years ago this week. And then some photos from outside. So outside photography, okay. Look at all this mass of people. If you're trying to see where, what's going on here, here's John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier right here with the mass of people. And then this is a slightly earlier photo. This is them coming out of the church. <laughs> look at Jackie. She's got like the, oh my God, look at all these people look on her face. And the policeman keeping people at bay. And the happy young couple. And so this, of course, would be a little bit more than seven years before John F. Kennedy won the election in November of 1960, become president. Oh, we were talking about this earlier. So, yeah, I don't know if he had a wedding ring. Um, remember, Patty and Brad, we were kind of talking about that earlier. So he's not wearing a ring now, so maybe they just didn't have one. Back then, I researched that, but I didn't, really, I didn't see anything. So It was much more common for um, a lot of ceremonies to be single ring. There were, there were lots of reasons why men did not wear wedding rings in earlier eras. eras. Uh, one of which they they were dangerous in most kinds of physical occupations. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about her dress a little bit later and her ring a little bit later. I've been noticing in a lot of these different pictures, the, the dress looks very different which is very interesting i mean it doesn't you know you don't it doesn't look this like the same picture uh shot after shot it's very interesting yeah oh, okay um so let me do another video here but hold on one second i pause the recording okay everybody wants to know about jackie's dress so let's talk about that the dress worn by Jacqueline Bouvier for her wedding, John F. Kennedy in 1953, is one of the best remembered bridal gowns of all time. I mean, think about it. What are the most uh, famous wedding dresses? I guess I'd maybe think um, uh, Princess Diana's maybe um, or some others out there. Jackie turned to Anne Lowe, the trailblazing American designer, to create her ivory silk taffeta wedding dress, which included a portrait neckline and a bouffant skirt made with more than 50 yards of fabric. Meanwhile, she opted to wear her grandmother's heirloom rose point lace veil, held in place by clusters of orange blossoms, and carried a bouquet of pink and white spray orchids and gardenias. And there's a close-up of her. She, um, well, I'll, 
tell you tell you her thoughts on her dress in just a moment. Um, I think it's beautiful. A lot of other people think it's a beautiful dress. She looks very radiant. Close up at the bottom. And then the designer of the dress was Anne Lowe, um, a artist who's really kind of been uh, almost like rediscovered uh, in recent years that people go back and study her career, Anne Lowe. And here she is. She was known as being a very innovative fashion designer. And she had a lot of problems with the um, wedding dress and the other dresses for the Kennedy wedding because her um, place where she was working on um, all this clothing dresses got flooded by a big rainstorm um, and so she had to salvage what she could from the damage and hurry up and work like nonstop crazy to get everything done in time and she just barely pulled it off uh, so Ann Lowe she's a very fascinating individual as well you can learn more about her Ann Lowe society's best kept secret rich women pass her name among themselves some have even cheated her but few outsiders have heard of Anne Lowe, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to learn about an interesting, fascinating person, just you do a little bit of research on her. Now, um, Jackie's um, future stepfather, or sorry, future father-in-law, Joe Kennedy, was the one who selected Anne Lowe. And um, she wasn't entirely <laughs> crazy with her wedding dress. Um she was really into like French fashion and stuff and kind of had some other ideas, but she just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Um, and went with this, this is a reproduction of the wedding dress. That's at the uh, John F. Kennedy presidential library museum in Boston. And that's Jacqueline's daughter and her brother-in-law admiring the dress. And then there's also a replica of it on display at the, nation's first ladies library in Canton, Ohio. So that's another great place to go visit the national first ladies library in Canton, Ohio. Patty, any thoughts on the dress? Oh, well, and I'm, we were just Anything talking about that in the uh, Q and a too. Um, one of the reasons it can look so different in different shots and different angles is that uh, I forget who said it, but uh, Becky, maybe that it's in some ways it's like four different dresses um all crafted together the Anne Lowe again is being reappreciated and for her creativity um and yeah she actually was known to have invented this particular bodice that was known to be particularly comfortable as opposed to a lot of women's dresses in the day it, they would be very uncomfortable to wear but uh she uh, um one of the things she did was if you notice how those um creases go it, she cut things on the bias so that the outline would have been very would have draped very naturally and at the same time supported um the the figure so it, it they that was one reason she was so popular she just created such beautiful silhouettes oh yeah like i said it's um i mean if you think of like what are the most famous wedding uh dresses to include this one on that list uh, supposedly of she actually ended up because of the flood in the shop she ended up um losing money on this but there was just no way she was going to uh you know let let this down so like she worked i think non-stop for like two weeks before the wedding to get to recreate not just this but all those bridesmaids dresses as well yeah and there were a lot of them and, and there's she tons built... of hand stitching in this yeah yeah i don't know if they had david's bridal back then either no, so, <laughs> that as an option. And yeah, it, 50 yards of fabric. Plan. Yeah, <laughs> what exactly. Was that, what, I what was that? I don't think Dave's bridal for the cheap bridal gowns there. <laughs> and I'm not sure that one in New York, what is it? Gar, not Garfinkel's. That was a Washington, D.C. department store. Oh, right? Garfinkel's. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Well, yeah, people who re who have read the Society pages will probably remember the name Priscilla of Boston as well. She was a famous wedding dress designer for Society Brides oh, yeah. for a long time. Okay. So there it is. And then what about the ring? 
Jackie Kennedy's engagement ring is one of the most referenced in history. The Art Deco design included a 2.88 carat diamond and a 2.84 carat emerald, both square cut and surrounded by diamond baguettes. In 1962, the then First Lady had the ring altered, incorporating round and marquee diamonds as well. So initially, it would have been these two pieces. For the wedding itself, Jackie also wore a diamond and pearl bracelet gifted to her by JFK the night before the ceremony as her something new, as well as a strand of family pearls and a diamond leaf pin given to her by her in-laws. So there you go, Jackie's engagement ring. And another ring. All right, then some more historical wedding photos this is george and barbara bush so young crazy. looking <laughs> yeah all these people so young looking and what's with these people photo bombing even back then hey man get out of the way they're taking their wedding photo <laughs> he looks like a waiter i think He's like yeah but look at that cake i really want a piece of that cake <laughs> and then here's patty's favorite <laughs> hillary and bill clinton <laughs> I don't know if the scream 70s to anybody else what it does to me. <laughs> well, all it's missing is a, a, a crown of flowers. <laughs> exactly. I was actually trying to remember after we got, we signed off this morning if she had been wearing flowers in her hair. That that would have uh, like, oh, sealed really? the deal right there. Oh, wow. Okay. Look at the size of his tie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, in the pinstripe suit. <laughs> the hair. Yeah. I just love looking at the clothes and hairstyle and stuff of Ben and it was from days gone by. And then we were at the Bush Museum earlier today. And oh, this is George W. and Laura Bush's. <laughs> they look like children. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I bet if I posted the picture, just the two of them, and asked people who it was, that, I mean, after you know who it is, you can see the resemblance. When you first look, like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> She almost looks like Sally Field in that picture, Laura oh, Bush. Yeah, yeah. And then Barack and Michelle Obama. And then because we're a nonpartisan, non political organization, we haven't included any wedding photos after Obama because of the upcoming election and the two gentlemen that are running for president. So we'll skip. Mr. Trump and Mr. Biden at this program. All right. So the Hammersmith Farm, and using the term farm loosely, we um, <laughs> were commenting on this earlier. So here's where the wedding reception took place. The Hammersmith Farm. Um, it's not a farm with pigs and chickens and cows. It's more of a gentleman farm. Remember, it's, we're in Newport, Rhode Island. And it was a 300-acre estate. There were over a 1,000 guests. And the menu was featuring main courses of creamed chicken, fruit salad in pineapple halves, and a five-tier wedding cake. And this is probably the other famous photo um, of John F. Kennedy and Jack and Movie on their wedding day. This also was a colorized photo, FYI. And the farm, the Hammersmith farm, was owned by Jacqueline Bouvier's stepfather. So he... Um, and his family, um, after he married Jacqueline Bouvier's mom, they kind of spent their summers, for the most part, in Newport, Rhode Island, um, and the rest of the year in Washington, D.C. And then here is the farm, so to speak, the main house. And then you can see the water out here. And then here's another view. So this is the house here and you can see the water on one side and the water on the other side and there you go so this is the summer house <laughs> of the family and a great location to have a wedding um this house still stands although it's i think it's owned by a nonprofit organization now yeah i think it's on uh, the newport tours and again, they call it a farm, but you're not going to see guys in overalls and 
tractors and cows and chickens and pigs and stuff like that. That's but a, there are horses. What's that, Patty? That was a society affectation, I think, calling these summer houses farms. Yeah. When you go on the other road and you see those big, huge palaces that they call cottages, you know, it's all in the same. <laughs> yeah. Cottages and farms in this area. <laughs> Just the loaded with them. And estates. And so again, these are some more. These these aren't photos of the wedding, obviously. These are more contemporary or modern photos. So you can get a feel of the place. All right. So a lot of the pictures that I've been showing you up until now, and a lot of the ones I'm going to show you later, uh, were taken by a very important photographer. So uh, when Joe Kennedy, John F. Kennedy's dad, was hiring a photographer, he just didn't get any random person. Uh, he went and got the best money he could buy, and he ended up um, hiring Tony Frissel as the photographer. And while she might not be a household name, she's a really important figure in the history of 20th century photography. And so let's look at some of her work. And so this is a famous photo you might have seen of Frida Kahlo. And then this is one of the most famous photos taken of World War II. This is during the London Blitz. Um, and this young boy's home was destroyed. Um, and he's kind of sitting here, kind of taking everything all in. And she took both of these photos. And then later on, uh, this is a famous fashion photograph that she took. And then this is another, this is also a very famous fashion photograph. But um, suffice to say, maybe one of the most, another one of the most maybe famous photos taken in London. And so while you might not have heard of her, um, you've perhaps seen her photographic work before. And so she was the person who's taken a lot of these pictures that we've been looking at. And then she also took a lot of the ones that we're going to see uh, moving forward. And then this is a famous photo that she took of um, Jacqueline Kennedy after the wedding. So there's, it's, you know, it's hard to say what the most famous photo of Jacqueline Kennedy is. Um, but if you had to make a list of, I don't know, the top 50 or the top 100 or whatever, uh, this one would probably be on the list. So this one was taken um, several years later after the wedding, but by the same photographer. And then let's talk about the reception because we're getting hungry and we want to be fed and have some wedding cake. Um, so, all right. So here is the bride. Here is the groom. Here is the mother of the groom, John F. Kennedy's mom, and the mother of the bride, Jacqueline Bouvier, Kennedy's mom. And then here's the couple with Joe Kennedy. And here's the happy father of the groom. And then a bunch of outdoor pictures. And then you might remember this photo uh, from earlier. So this was Charles Bartlett, the gentleman who introduced them at the dinner party. Adjusting her hair. Getting into position for the photos. The bridal party. And again, it was interesting when Patty pointed out earlier the shorter hair. So thanks, Patty. Appreciate that. Well, I was also thinking, too, this was the era of Audrey Hepburn, who was famous for that pixie cut, too, so. Oh, yeah, good point. And then, of course, you can see the groomsman's party over here. Boy, imagine having to recreate all of those dresses in two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> really incredible. Not sure what this guy is doing down here. <laughs> Joking around. <laughs> now, somebody had asked about Ethel Kennedy. She is in this photo at the lower right. And then right in front of Jacqueline is uh, uh, her sister, Lee Radziwill. 
Yes, right here. And then this is Mrs. Robert Kennedy right here. And here's Robert Kennedy back here, the best man. I believe Ethel is still alive. I'm pretty sure she's in her 90s, but um, yeah. Whoops. And then here's Ted Kennedy. Yeah, he was very young at this time. Even the men all have very short hair. Except for JFK. He's got a head of hair a lot of men would kill for. <laughs> he always was famous for his hair. Yeah. Compare his hair to everybody else's. Yeah, that's a great point. It is very noticeably different. It's almost as long as his wife's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> getting there. And then Jackie was a big animal lover. And so here's her dog. Brought into the photo. Oh, yeah. Becky's pointing out that even Marilyn Monroe in this era had short hair in this period of her career. Oh, that's not ironic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, very true. Thanks, Becky. Appreciate that. And then here's a cute, I like this photo. Here's the, the, the dog's <laughs> head sneaking out. Everybody looking so happy. And then here's that famous photo again of taken on the farm. And a colorized version. We were talking about this also earlier. Notice how uh, Jack's noticed the camera, uh, but Jacqueline hasn't. She's staring directly at him, but he's observed that there's a, a camera in the distance or something in the distance. So interesting photo. She's looking at him, but he's looking at us. And then I love how the wind is captured her veil. And you can't see the cows, the pigs, and the chickens off in the distance or the tractor. <laughs> But beautiful photo nonetheless. And then the guest showed up. So this is a big political event because you know in uh, in politics, events like this playing a very important role. So I'm sure the there's a lot of planning and decision making to who was and wasn't going to be on the guest list for political purposes, because at this point in time, John F. Kennedy Center uh, probably already thinking about higher ambitions oh dear uh, leslie and diane are both confirming that ethel is uh very much alive and she's 95 years old oh good thank you i appreciate that and okay so it is a farm because here's some horses <laughs> but yeah what a great uh, experience be if we go back in time and crash this wedding and check it out. And tents for the guests to keep the sun off. I really like this picture. She has such a lovely expression on her face. And then, so another interesting tidbit, we talked before about the menu and one of the food items on the menu was half cut pineapples uh, with fruit salad. And while it might not seem like a big deal, uh, at this point in time, well, this was the era where you couldn't get certain types of food um, all year round like you can now. Like I remember talking to my mom and grandma about how, you know, 
uh, back in the day, you could only get grapes a certain time of year, or you could only get oranges a certain time of year, because yeah, they could ship stuff around the United States, but they didn't have airplanes shipping things in from all over the world like they do now. Uh, and pineapples would have been very expensive and very kind of, even to this point in time, exotic. Uh, and so to have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pineapples uh, imported in uh, and then cut in half for the guests, that would have been very, uh, very expensive. Uh, th this guy's funny, kind of photobombing this. This is another famous picture of the two of them, uh, their wedding. And you got the guy photobombing. That's kind of cool. And then it looks like John F. Kennedy is hungry. He's ready to, he's ready to <laughs> dive into that food. And uh, Jackie's like, hey, look at all the wedding stuff taking place. He's like, yeah, I want to eat. You know, another interesting thought, is these chairs don't look like the type of chairs you would keep at your house, probably. Maybe they rented them. And who knows, I mean, if you have a family member that uh, also got married sometime around this era, who knows, maybe they sat on the same uh, <laughs> chair that, John F. Kennedy or Jacqueline Bouvier sat on. Who knows? And then we had an interesting discussion. So there's over a thousand guests at the reception, um, and they would have had to cut the cake in paper thin slices to feed all those people with this cake. So of course there obviously would have been more than one cake. This was the main cake. And the wedding party. Having a good time. Here is Robert Kennedy, the best man, posing a toast to his brother. And then the famous cutting of the cake. And Patty brought up a great point earlier about how um, the, oh, I don't know, what would you call it? The, the, the symbolism behind this of the hands coming together um, and cutting the cake together. Uh, yeah, and it became a ritual photo, actually. I mean, it, it, that photo is re replicated in so many weddings. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, that's one of the top photos you got to get is the cutting of the cake. But both with the hands on top of each other and uh -huh. all that. I wonder if her veil was her official something old. Well, I, oh. I wonder when the cake thing started to become popular. What were you going to say, Brad? Uh, well, the, the, earlier on, I think we heard that the veil came from her grandmother. So That's what I mean. I, I wonder if that was her official something old. Somebody had asked that question, like, what was her something blue and her something old? I'm not sure if I ever knew what the something blue is. Very often, um, they would sew like a piece of a swatch of blue fabric that meant something to the bride in into the hems or the seams of the dress that was yeah. and that i think the thing. end of that little ditty is a half penny in your shoe <laughs> that would hurt like heck after a couple hours yeah definitely <laughs> after some dancing so here's the five tier <laughs> cake and then you can see here's the house in the background and now these bushes and stuff so a nice setting for them but see what, see what we're talking about with the dress, though? Different angles that you're looking at it, no matter how you look at it, there's always a, a significant detail that you wouldn't have necessarily picked out in an earlier picture or a later uh -huh. picture. It's, it's yeah, just like a, a really beautifully created uh, work of art. Yeah, it's like a sculpture. It is. And then they're having a good time. And then the famous throwing of the bouquet or tossing of the bouquet. Oh, and Leslie uh, let us know that Montillo's made the cake. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Montillo's, I, she's got it spelled two different ways, so I <laughs> don't hold me to the pronunciation, but some because somebody else had asked who made the cake, and I'm like, I oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have to research that for next time. And then we're off to start the dancing. So a real fairy tale wedding for the prince and the princess. Oh, goodness. Jeff wants to know who cut the bouquet. Do we know that? <laughs> yeah, that I'm not sure of. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Quick, somebody Google it. <laughs> I bet you it was one of JFK's sisters.
And then this one, this photo is out of order. I just included here because it was color. So again, just really incredible to think what it would be like to go in a time machine and travel back uh, to September 12th, 1953 and see this wedding. You know, when you think of the symbolism of that, the two hands together cutting the cake, the, the events that those two literally were together for in their lifetime, no one could have conceived of that. Even, you know, the, the symbolism of, of this photo of gesture, but yet nobody could possibly have conceived of what would, what would lie ahead for them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they knew that, you know, speaking of on, togetherness, on, on the bigger and better things, but what exactly those would have been, uh, would have been. Yeah. Healthy. And th their history, I mean, togetherness developed a whole new meaning if you think about it in their terms. Yeah. And only married for 10 years and two months before. Yeah. Yeah. He was killed. All right, so I have another video. Let me pause the recording for a moment. Okay, what about after the wedding? So I'll go through a few more kind of postscript items. We're in the home stretch for our program. We're not done just yet, so stick with us. And let's talk about a few other things. Oops. All right, so we were talking about the society pages, and there you go. Senator Kennedy marries. Paris as police hold back sightseers. He and Jacqueline Lee Bouvier exchanged vows before a crowd of notables in Newport, Rhode Island. And John F. for Fitzgerald Kenny, 36, tussle haired freshman Democratic U.S. Senator from Massachusetts. And son of one-time ambassador to the court of St. James Joseph E. Kennedy and Jacqueline Lee Bouvier, 24, one-time Washington Times Herald, inquiring photographer and debutante daughter, et cetera, et cetera. So there you go. All right. So where do you think the Kennedys went on their honeymoon? Do you think they went to Niagara Falls or <laughs> Las Vegas or the Bahamas or they went on a carnival cruise or maybe they went to Paris. No, they went to Acapulco. They actually went to two different destinations. Uh, the first one is Acapulco at this point in time with kind of, this is the dawn of the uh, golden age of airplane travel. Uh, Acapulco was becoming a very, very popular tourist destination and Kenny's board a plane and off they go. If you're heard of Acapulco, but not sure where it is, so here's the map of Mexico. Here's me right here in Dallas. <laughs> here's Mexico City. And here's Acapulco. Las and, Vegas yeah. was in its infancy at this point. Oh, yeah. 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 I didn't even know if any of those casinos were built by then. Well, they were much. I think wasn't Bugsy Siegel one of the first people that that uh, had a vision for developing this casino culture? But they yeah. much, much smaller. Most of those original ones have been um destroyed we, and rebuilt and replaced yes yeah all replaced and then this picture is a little bit after uh, 1953 but gives you a sense of what acapulco looks like if you haven't been there and another photo taken a few years after 1953 but before all the kind of more modern development has taken place And so a nice, beautiful place for a honeymoon. Nice and clean. Look at how clean and white it all is. White and blue. Yeah, and the beautiful water. Yeah. There's no chain restaurants and all that <laughs> stuff. Forest trap things. And anyway, uh, getting back to the newlyweds. Uh, some cute photos of them. And then John F. Kennedy rented a convertible car so he could go around sightseeing. Nice so, little roadster there, yeah. Yeah, and sitting in the car, getting ready to do some exploring around the Acapulco area. They must be going on a day trip because it looks like they have maybe a, a picnic basket or something with them in the back seat. Oh, yeah. A hamper, as it would have been called in the society pages. Oh, yeah, a hamper. Oh, okay. <laughs> that. Oh. Um, so, yeah, thanks, Pat. I didn't know that. That's cool. And then um, while they were down there, you know, John F. Kennedy he was in the Navy and 
boating and all that stuff. So he wanted to go fishing. So he actually went out and while he was there, he caught this sail. He went out by himself uh, with some other people like tourists. And then Jackie stayed back at the hotel uh, and then he caught this sailfish. So then he went and ran and got her like, hey, look, honey, I caught this big fish. Um, so then uh, she he wanted her to pose with the fish. And she's like, uh, why don't you put a shirt on? <laughs> uh, and so that's what he ended up doing. And then he actually was really proud of that fish. Um, and it ended up kind of being transported around different places that uh, John F. Kennedy worked at. She, Jackie didn't want that in the house. Um, so he had to like essentially take it to work uh, and kind of stash it in different places because she, she wouldn't let him hang it up in their house. That and the deer head. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I'm not sure what's behind that one. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that that fish became sort of a running joke in the JFK group. <laughs> oh. And yeah, that guy looks so young and good looking and tan and happy and etc cetera, etc cetera. um one of the things uh, remember Jacqueline was a photographer and so she took a lot of pictures during her lifetime um and so here she is with it looks like an instamatic camera and she's got notice how much smaller it is versus that one that she had when she was a um, news reporter And then the second part of their honeymoon is they went to Santa Barbara, California, and another beautiful place on the Pacific Ocean. And so here's Santa Barbara, photo from back in the day. And if you heard of Santa Barbara, didn't know where that place is, uh, another quick geography lesson for you. So here's San Francisco up here. And then here's Los Angeles, where I lived for several years. And here's Santa Barbara. And Palm Springs, where uh, uh, with uh, Frank Sinatra had a house. Yeah, Palm Springs, is another great place. Well, that yeah, part of that, like um, Frank Sinatra had wanted JFK to stay out there on some trip or other. I forget which one. And uh, by that time, um, the various consultants were trying to open some daylight between the Rat Pack and JFK. So mm -hmm. Sinatra was very miffed that uh, he, he had done a lot of renovations, I think, anticipating this visit. And then another photo of Santa Barbara. So if you get a chance, make sure you check out beautiful Santa Barbara. And photo of them. I think this photo, they're going to like a dinner party um, in Santa Barbara. And then this photo, this photo uh, they actually went into a photo booth uh, and took this picture. So kind of a cute photo of the two of them, spur of the moment. And then and the newlyweds went back to Washington, D.C. And they ended up moving into a house that was just like three blocks from the house where they met at. Uh, remember, remember they met at this dinner party house. Um, they ended up moving into a house like three blocks away from there. And this is a cute photo of the two of them. Um, they're looking at their wedding photos, trying to you know, do that, pick out which ones you like type of thing. It has a bit shorter in that picture. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is a picture of them out in front of their newlywed house. Um, Jackie, after the wedding, she went back to school. So she graduated from George Washington University, but she went to Georgetown University. Um, and she took a bunch of additional classes to kind of continue her education. So she's getting ready to go off to school. And then he's getting ready to go off to his job in the Senate. They're standing on the in front of their house. And you can actually see this house. We go see this um, on our tour. It's kind of uh, interesting to look at the house in current times. It looks very, very similar. 
This is an interesting shot because she is dressed in such an iconic school, literal college co-ed outfit. Uh -huh. And I don't know how how staged that is because it, it is so atypical of her look at any other time in any other photo. Um, you know, but it, it's it, like a college co-ed appearance. Yeah, I think it is kind of a, a staged photo. I don't yeah, think it, it just uh, is so the neighbor, different. The neighbor across the street just happened to be outside with his camera. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i mean it's it just so if you look at the next photo that you put up it, it her, this the next photo is much more typical of her all the time look uh -huh. and and that that photo just is so not jackie <laughs> yeah so this is um the same house but in the back and they're on their balcony uh, and they're kind of looking out uh over their backyard and so for this one uh, a photographer from McCall's came and took a bunch of photos of them uh, for a story he was doing about the two of them. And so he took this photo. But I always, I always think this is a really cool photo because they they're standing there kind of looking off into the distance and, you know, perhaps contemplating their future. But this is when, uh, you know, they were, they were still newlyweds at this point in time. One, one of my but, favorites of the, of the photos you use is the one of them walking in Georgetown together and he's wearing just these ordinary old old school kids like oh yeah yeah well <laughs> i love that picture because of that yeah yeah we'll see that picture in just a moment so um and then a lot of there's always a lot of um talk and discussion about their marriage and you know his alleged infidelity and you know the relationship between the two and there's if you go look through i mean there's thousands and thousands of photos of the kennedys but if you look um at the photos and there's a lot of pictures of them uh, admiring one another and so you can really get a sense of the love uh, between the two of them in my opinion um, and so this is I think a very touching photo where they're out on a, a parade event I think like so many relationships theirs was complex but it did not it did it never appeared that it was unfulfilling it, it, yeah on, some, I mean, on a it, number it, of levels you know Oh yeah, I mean, who are we to judge? We weren't there exactly. Thinking about it after the fact, but this is a um, when he was running for president, and then this is at the inauguration. So again, remember they got married in September of 1953, and then in November of 1960, he was elected president, and then of course that's the beginning of Camelot. And so John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy married on September 12th, 1953, 70 years ago this week. Um, and as I said earlier, so we have a whole series of programs taking place um, over the next few months because it's the 60th anniversary of the death of President Kennedy. So in honor of him uh, and his legacy and his contributions to uh, our country and the world, uh, we have a series of programs coming between now and November, live stream programs over Zoom. Uh, some in-person things taking place in Washington, D.C., uh, and then some in-person things also taking place here in Dallas, Texas. And this was the photo that Patty was referencing a minute ago. So well, one of the events we have coming up, it's a free walking tour in Washington, D.C. So I live in Dallas, but I used to live in Washington, D.C. for many, many years um, before moving here. And so uh, one of the things I used to get a kick out of doing was showing people around the Georgetown neighborhood and pointing out all these different places um that are associated with the kennedys and so if you want to join us for our, our free walking tour we take place on the evening of saturday september 23rd uh, unfortunately because i'm only in washington dc for a few days um, i can only do the tour once but maybe i'll be able to do it again at some point in time in the future like maybe next year um it's kind of cool because we actually go oops we actually go to this spot where this photo was taken um but it's really interesting to see how the street uh, looks almost exactly the same <laughs> as it did uh, when this photo was taken, gee, 69 years ago. Because uh, this was photo they were, this photo was taken uh, uh, less than a year after they were married in 1954. And it's really cool to go back and see uh, the street looks almost exactly the same. Uh, and then yeah, his um, sneakers <laughs> and the clothing and all that stuff. So really cute photo too. Of them. Anything and, else um, on this photo stand out to you, Patty? You well, Phyllis up? just pointed out that the that these the style of pant was called pedal pushers, and it was very iconic fashion in those days. Oh really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, okay. Sort of come mid calf. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. See.
I always learn a lot doing these programs. And then, um, well, so we had a busy day today. Earlier today, we were at the George uh, W. Bush Presidential Center in Dallas. So we were learning all about George W. Bush, Laura Bush, and the 9-11 Memorial. Um, we had a great turnout for that. If you missed us, um, we'll probably be going back to the Bush Museum at some point in time in the near future. So you can be on the lookout for that. If you want to join our in-person events we have in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you can check us out our Dallas, Texas history and culture sister group. And you can find our events on Eventbrite, Facebook, Meetup, and YouTube. Um, and then this was a walk that we had a few months ago in the Bishop Arts District um, in Dallas. And here's me in the back with the pink shirt. So come check nice out. Nice crowd, that. Robert. Yeah. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and then as I mentioned, so this program is being recorded. If you want to watch it again, if you joined us late, if you know anybody else that would be interested in learning all about the Kennedy's wedding, um, I won't be able to post it on our YouTube channel till tomorrow or Monday, though. Um, but it'll be out there eventually. And the name of our YouTube channel is Washington, D.C. History and Culture. Now, if you're watching us live, sit tight because I have another short video to show you. Um, if you're watching a recording of this, this is the end of our program. But if you're watching this live, uh, just sit tight for a moment. And... <laughs> 